we first aired this story, there were seven proposed cold fire plants, and now that number is up to 11. These new plants will add greenhouse gases and contribute to global warming, which brings us to our next topic, how will global warming impact Texas? Joining me is Colin Rowan, Environmental Defense's Regional Director of Communication. Colin is one of the authors of the report, Fair Warning, Global Warming, and the Lone Star State. And Colin, welcome to Austin Now. Thanks for having me. Uh, your report has gotten a lot of attention across mm -hmm. the state. Uh, there's some rather shocking news in there for people who live along the Texas coast and for places like Austin uh, in terms of what science is saying about the changes in the climate here in the Lone Star State. I want to spend a moment just talking about science because this is still a bone of contention. There are still propagandists out there who are saying global warming is all an invention. It's all hysteria. Uh, what is the state of science on global warming? Well, there's, there's actually a pseudo-debate. Um, the scientists who study this and who work on this around the world, especially here in America, are um, very convinced of the science. Uh, global warming's happening, it's happening now, and, and man-made greenhouse gases are contributing to it. There, of course, there's a political debate going on. It's been going on for about 10 or 15 years where some people are saying it's not happening. One of the most visible uh, critics was a man named Greg Easterbrook of the Brookings Institute, and he's what we call a true skeptic. He's not paid by the oil industry. He's not paid by people who have a vested interest. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, he wrote an op-ed that was in the New York Times that laid out his case for why he was convinced. He cited the American Ge Geophysical Union, the American Association of the Advancement of Science, the National Academy of Sciences of this President Bush's administration have all come out and said that global warming is a real problem. So he said case closed. And when one of the most vocal critics says case closed, it might be time to move on and start thinking about what we need to do about it. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about uh, what all this means to Texas. Um, the report has some rather graphic information mm -hmm. about uh, shrinking coastlines and uh, uh, climate change in terms of uh, hotter, drier mm -hmm. periods, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Let, let's just take Austin, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the prediction for the climate of this part of the state? Well, it's going to be warmer. Um, and as people in Austin know, Austin sits on the line. If you look at a, a map of Texas, we sit on the line between green and brown. And what the scientists are saying is that with an increased temperature and with a decreased precip precipitation, which is what they predict for this region, that line's going to move east and north. So we're going to look more like West Texas. Uh, one scientist actually said College Station is going to look more like Austin, and Austin's going to more lo look more like West Texas. So, you know, this is going to be a gradual shift. But you know, it was 100 degrees this this April. Mm -hmm. um, I was sweating during <laughs> the Easter egg hunt at my house, <laughs> and everyone's been talking about sure. why it why is it so hot so early mm -hmm. this year? And that's the kind of thing that we're going to be able to expect more of as global warming continues. Now, uh, the coast is a, a primary mm -hmm. concern after the last hurricane season. Mm -hmm. uh, we know uh, that science is telling us uh, the seas are rising. Mm -hmm. How quickly are they rising? How much are they expected to rise? Well, they've risen a lot more over the last hundred years than that historic period. So mm -hmm. it's already happening. Scientists' predictions vary anywhere between one to three feet or the more conservative mm -hmm. estimates up to 10 feet over the next 100 years. So it's kind of hard for people to visualize because it's not like one morning someone in Galveston's going to wake up and the water's going to be a foot higher. Mm -hmm. But we're in hurricane season now, and it just may happen that they'll wake up one morning and the storm surge will be at their doorstep. And that's one of the things that's concerning us the most is sea level rise is the kind of thing that will impact our kids and our grandkids, but hurricanes are happening now, and when you have warmer water mm -hmm. in the Gulf, like we're going to have with global warming, you're going to have stronger hurricanes. And um, we learned last year what happens just to our infrastructure when there's a threat of a big storm. The, the entire southern part of the state has to evacuate, which caused quite a bit of mess. Yeah, when everybody should remember those pictures of trying to get out of Houston because right. that's a right. very scary scenario for mm -hmm. the future. Now, um, let's talk about Texas's contribution to the problem. Um, this is one of the things that was rather shocking to me, because if Texas was a nation, we'd be the world's seventh largest polluter? I think that's gone up. Um, we, we used in the report a fairly conservative estimate based on the data that we could find that has been published elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But we emit more carbon dioxide and, and global warming gases than any other state in the Union. 
uh, if we were a country, we'd rank right up there with the biggest, uh, more than uh, the United Kingdom, more than... Wait a minute, more than the United Kingdom? Great Britain has 60 million people, yeah. Texas has 23 right. million, we yeah. have more greenhouse we're, emissions. We're proud of our power, and mm -hmm. we're proud of our emissions, and that's one of the things that we're going to have to change. The way that we look at it is, Texas can't solve this problem alone. Uh, we have to be working with other states and we have to be working, the United States has to be working with other nations. And Texas is a bit of a, a state analogy to what the United States is globally. The number one emitter and one of the primary uh, players that is dragging its feet when it comes to fixing the problem. You were talking about the power plants earlier. Just at a time when states are really starting to pay attention to this, our largest utility is proposing 11 new power plants that's going to double its carbon dioxide emissions. That's exactly the wrong kind of thing that we need to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. We need to be figuring how to ratchet it down, and, and we're not. And well, you say that other states are uh, doing things differently, mm -hmm. and uh, what is driving that politically? Because I understand that Republican administrations mm -hmm. in other states are among the leaders. Right. Um, California, Governor Schwarzenegger in California has been very active on this. There's uh, states from Montana, which is not necessarily known as an environmental mecca, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a liberal movement, mm -hmm. uh, all the way to Governor Richardson in, in New Mexico. But there are lots of states that are doing this. Governor Pataki in New York mm -hmm. has been very active in figuring out how to reduce New York's emissions. So this isn't a partisan issue. Some people are trying to make it so, but there are people on both sides of the aisles. There are evangelical Christian groups that are now saying global warming is a big problem. There are Democrat groups, Republican groups. So this is, this is something that there's a lot of agreement among mm. a very broad group of people that say that this is, this is something we need to focus on now. What do you see as the biggest impediments to Texas actually doing something about this? We need our leaders to to do something. Uh, there was an announcement last week about the Western governors who made an announcement uh, urging their states to do something. And I called Governor Perry's office to see if he had a comment, and I didn't get a call back. So we, I just don't know what it's going to take to get our leaders here in Texas to do something, but I do know that that's going to be a critical first step. We've got to get our leadership to move this and to push it as an important issue. All right, well, Colin Rowan, again, Communications Director for Environmental Defense here in Texas. Thank you very much for being on the program. Thank